How you doing folks, it's Des Catties, and in this video what I want to do, I just want to briefly talk about saws. Okay, so sit back and stay tuned. So quite recently, um, what happened was I was out last weekend, if people are regular viewers to my channel, and I was out with Matt Tightwad, and um, I lit literally for the day. I just took packed up my stuff that I'd normally going to take for a lot for a sort of a lightweight day out, and um, I took my um, silky boy, uh, so the silky saw pocket boy, and what I noticed was that before, uh, I started using it, and then after a short while, I noticed that there was a split right down there. There's a hairline crack right down there. I don't know if the, the camera will pick that up, but there's a crack in it. Okay, now if you look at this blade, it's not terribly straight. I have bent it over time. I've tried to tap it into place and all the rest of it, but it's obviously gone a bit wavy. <coughs> Excuse me. So, what I've done was went online and I basically ordered myself a new blade. Okay, in the meantime, that got me thinking. There's been a lot of videos I see of people's opinions on silky saws, Laplander saws and such like, and then people justifying why they've gone over to that certain brand of saw. Now, if I can just give my humble opinion of what I think, all right, and it's something that I've always said, all right, I like the Laplander saw, and I also like silkies, all right. I've got these two, I've got a Pocket Boy, I've got a Gone Boy, and I've also got a Gomotaro, all right? Like I said, I use this for cutting wood out in my garden, for using for, for storing in my log store, for using on a fire, okay? And what I will say, silkies are great. They cut through bone like butter. <laughs> um, but what I personally think with these blades is that they're very unforgiving. And they're very unforgiving in the sense that they snap very easy, okay? But is that down to the operator or the individual that's using the saw? Or is it down to just the way the, the, the blades are made? A Laplander, you can get away with almost, you know, sort of, it, as I said before, it's got a real kind of nice flexibility in there. It, yeah, the blades will bend a little and they will, but they're easy to tap out and straighten up again. I've done it with my pocket boy over time because that has that has gone over a few times. Someone uh, I lent my saw some years ago to a friend, and he actually snapped the end and replaced the blade. And I've still got the blade that he put in there, okay. But if we look at my Gomatoro, and I'll take that out, we've got a Philip. It looks like a it looks like a flat-headed screwdriver. So I've lost about that much on the end, okay. So. What's the opinion? The opinion really is it's down to you, all right? It's not me, it's not, you know, at the end of the day, if I, I snap them blades, okay? That was because I was maybe sort of getting a little bit aggressive with the, um, with the, with the push as opposed to just using it as a pull saw because that's what it's designed to do. It's designed to work on the pull, all right? So if you, get, you start getting a little bit over ambitious and then you start pushing it and all the rest of it, then it does have a tendency to catch on the wood and it will bend and it will potentially snap, okay? That's why you get all these, these um, you know, saws that are, tend into, are turned into flat-headed screwdrivers. So we've put, you know, it, it, I, <sighs> I don't really know what to say to you other than it's up to you what, what, what saw you use, all right? I like silkies, I like a Laplander. I will literally grab what I want at the time and put in my day sack. If I want to take the pocket bar, I'll take that, the, 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 and so on and so forth. When I did the Hunter Gatherer, five day course, survival course, full on, lack of food, lack of water and everything else, I opted for the Laplander. I put a brand new blade in it, and I took that on my belt with my knife, and that was my go-to. And the simple reason why I did that, I think because of the lack of water, the lack of nutrition, it might have been easy to make mistakes when, I, when I've got a lack of um, you know, food and water inside my body. 
okay and I opted to take the Laplander just for that simple fact that if I you know sort of start pushing and, and all the rest of it and getting a little bit sort of airheaded if you like to avoid the the opportunity of the blade potentially getting a hairline cracking it or snapping if I did that say on the first day with this kind of blade then that's kind of me buggered. I'm then just used to, I'm having to just use my knife because that's the only tools that I've got to prepare wood. All right, so all these little factors you want to take into consideration yourself. All right, I can't answer that question for you. As I say, I'm, I'm a mixture of both. I like using these kind of saws. All right, but there's sort of like, I've seen some videos. I've not watched them because I don't care. It's up to them people what they what, what did they decide on. But they're titled in why I've gone back to Silky and, you know, and all this sort of stuff. It, 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 it doesn't matter. It's horses for courses. It's whatever you choose. All right, so what I'm going to do now is just flip over and look at some other saw blades. All right, so I've got that kind of that controversy of Silky and Laplander. They're great saws. I love them. So, but at the end of the day, it's down to you. It's the choice that you take. It's the same as a bushcraft knife. I can't stand seeing these videos that are titled the 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 um the sort of the the best bushcraft knife. Uh, best bushcraft knife. The best bushcraft knife is a is a knife. It's a knife that cuts wood and cuts string and cuts this and cuts that. It doesn't. Ju I can't say what a best what the best knife is. Nobody can. It's down to you, the individual, and what you like using. All right. Okay. So we've got that controversy out of the way. So let's throw them away. Oops, I don't want to throw them away because I've just paid money for a new blade. But you get a picture. Okay. So let's look at some other knife, uh, some other saws. Then let's get that gomatora out of the way as well. All right. Let's get rid of that. I've got um. Uh, another pruning saw. I've got actually got two of these and uh, one of my mates Andy some time ago there's a shop here in the UK called The Range and Andy picked up one of these one of these saws basically a pruning saw uh, comes in its own plastic sheath it's got a holster like you know belt sheath uh, belt hanger on it as well and um, and these blades uh, they're a Wilkinson saw and they retail for about 15 quid they're a high carbon steel and you know what? These ain't a bad blade for what they are. You know, I mean, for what you can pay for a silky. And I'm not bad mouthing silky, please. But, you know, a, better, a silky saw costs you, you know, probably double, triple the amount of what this blade costs. All right. And this is held on pretty much as well as the, as a silky. Well, it definitely isn't a flat-headed screwdriver, that's for sure. All right. So there, that's, a, that's a nice little, um, that's a nice one to, if you wanted to sort of look out and buy. I mean, there's a thousand and one, and I haven't got a thousand and one saws. I've only got a certain few. And um, as I say, these are pretty good as well. They're, you know, even if you bought a new one, you know, they're, they're cheap enough just to buy a new one. Um, and throw the old one away if you didn't want it anymore. I mean, the, the other thing that surprises me with the sort of the Baco Laplanders and the Silkies as well is the amount of money it costs to replace the blades on them. You know, you sometimes you're better off just going out and buying a new whole whole saw. All right, so that's the uh, Wilkinson saw. Oh, crikey, the GoPro nearly went over them. If you wanted to take one of these with you, you don't really see many videos of people using one of these. Probably because it's, you know, I mean, it's it, it's quite, it'll flat, it'll pack down nicely into your rucksack or you can strap it onto the outside of your, of your bag and all the rest of it. But you don't see many people using wood saws such as this. And to be quite honest, I'm the same. I don't take one of these with me. But it's not a bad idea, is it? They're quite cheap. They're cheap enough to buy and they seem to last for, for an eternity. So maybe there is an option. Maybe use one of these kind of saws. <laughs> now the final sort of two I want to show you um, that I've got in my paraphernalia of saw blades one is the um, hang on it's getting all tangled here why is it all what's going on yeah I couldn't do that if you tried right I've got the, this is the Ray Mears buck saw all right now you've seen me using this a number of times but because I've gone down the road of, um, you know, being this Desmuck, Nesmuck, sort of lightweight kind of camping, for me personally, this is quite a bulky item, all right? Now, even during the early, uh, sorry, during the late winter months, I never took this sort. <clears throat> I managed to get away with either a Laplander or taking one of the Silky Saws, that was fine. Maybe if I was going on a canoe trip or somewhere like that, then I might opt to take one of these. 
but for the time being I'm going to just stick with the, the sort of smaller saws. Are they any good? Yeah, they are good. Price wise I think they're a little bit expensive. And, and the canvas bag is very good as well. But you can't get away with carrying that through the streets of the UK. So, um, yeah. Good, bad, who knows? Doesn't matter. But there's an option. It's good saw, but costly. And then the final one is obviously carrying a, a blade, just a normal saw blade. Now, in my last video, you would have seen me making a <coughs> buck saw out of hazel and um, a nice skill to learn okay nice practical skill to learn as part of your woodcraft and everything else to be able to maybe carry one of these blades you know curl it up put it inside a cooking pot or to put a leather sleeve on it or to get a belt and put it inside a belt you can get these um, these belts that have got like a little sheath all the way around so you can put a blade in there all right one mine what i've done is i've put split rings either end okay rather than having to worry about wooden dowels but that's just my personal choice but at the end of the day would i would i want to be sort of going through that kind of thing when i've got the option of carrying something like this or i've got the option of carrying a pruning saw and such like would i want to go making one who knows again only you can answer that question it's a good skill to learn i mean i haven't made one for ages so i thought in the video just to mix it up a little bit i'll make a buck saw i've had some nice comments back from people saying that they'd like the way that i actually made it and the joints that i use and all the rest of it and there it is and it worked once it come apart i didn't show that in the video simply because um by the time I did it and cut it all and all the rest of it, it wouldn't have looked right on the video. So, But that's not like me, because normally I like to show my failures as well. I'm not one for just sort of showing, oh, everything's got to be good, because it, you know, it doesn't humanise it. Um, but it did come apart once. And the reason why it came apart is because when I put the split into the wood at the bottom, where the blade goes into, the split obviously rose up a little bit more. And then when I was cutting into the wood, unbeknown to me, it literally just sort of concertinas and flipped out but it all went back together a second time and i was cutting wood with it no worries but there's your options all right this is just my humble options what i really wanted to do with the video was just kind of sort of go over the silky and the laplanders i think you know there's as i say there's all these videos on there of people justifying why they've gone back to and i like i said i haven't watched their videos i don't i'm not i'm not interested all right because at the end of the day it's down to you it's what you use it what suits you when you go out into your woodland or into your outdoor playground all right you know you use what you like for me because i'm obviously like i said i'm repeating myself probably but you know sort of going down that lighter weighted route then i will opt for either if i'm on my, if i'm wearing my leather belt with my knife on it then because of the sheath that i've got i'll use a laplander okay or what i do like to use as well i like to use the silky gone boy now i've been really good with this one i've been really good with this this is a nice this is you know, this is superb, this one. There's no bends in it yet. Touch wood, let's hope it's fine. And um, and the reason why I like this one as well, I'm sure you people can guess, is because it's got an orange handle. It's simply because if I drop it on the floor, I can obviously catch it. My eye will catch it, and it's easy to pick up. And it's probably one reason why I like to put sort of paracord and all that sort of stuff, slightly brighter coloured on my saws and such like, simply because if you drop them on the floor, they're a little bit easier to see on the uh, on the leaf on the leaf leaf matter on the woodland floor. All right, so there it is, folks. All right, so I don't, you know, I'm not, I'm not you know, trying to, you know, as I say, I'm not one for telling you what you should use and shouldn't. It. What I like to do is kind of keep an open mind, an open opinion of stuff, and just kind of, you know, sort of educate or even almost start a debate into what people like using, you know, in rela in, re in relations to kit. Um, so there it is folks all right so um, I'll let you know what's going on with the channel as well um, I am obviously it's going to keep going for the time being I've hit over that thousand mark I'm still not monetized yet I still can't monetize the channel because I still haven't reached the hours 
Um, so there's always some hurdle there, but I'm not, I don't really, I'm not that fussed really at the moment. I'm really just enjoying making the videos and I really appreciate the support and the comments that I'm getting back from everyone. I really do. I really like it. I'm getting a real nice mixture of comments now from new, new people and obviously existing sort of fans and followers to the channel. All right. With the, um, regards to the stickers and stuff like that. So with the stickers and such like, what happened was I had some stickers, um, I had a guy do some, my daughter actually come up with the illustration, okay, because she likes doing a little bit of art, and um, what I'd done was I contacted this guy, he actually come out with uh, a sticker design for me, which was which I went with. Um, as I say, if you're a follower to the channel, you would know that um, what I initially wanted to do was with the with the sticker, I actually wanted to put um, I actually wanted to put where the teacup is. I actually wanted to put a pair of scissors just because I wanted to involve Mr. Scissors. But a lot of people said, "No, nah, don't bother with Mr. Scissors." You know what I mean? All the rest of it. So basically, what I've done was we've come up with with obviously that sort of design. So Des Catties, the Y is obviously a, a, a catapult shape. Um, you've got the fire there, then you've got a cup for the cup of the old Darjeeling coffee, and then we've got the axe. All right, and I thought that that would do. That's it. No, I don't, don't want to sort of go over the top with it. Now, what's happened is, as I say, the guy that did me the stickers, uh, they came back, and I was really impressed. You know, he could come up, and that was obviously his designer sticker that he's come up with. As I say, that's, that's what's going to be um, part of my uh, merchandise. All right, and then what it was, I was talking to, um, just getting an idea on different stickers and uh, sort of like from different companies and stuff like that. And I was talking to, um, I just wanted to get some ideas because this is new water to me, really. And, um, and I contacted another sticker company. And what happened was when they actually sent the stickers back, which to my utter sort of, you know, it just niggled me a tiny bit. If you can see there where it's round, where where I actually loaded the sticker up onto their sort of thing, they've actually chopped it off. They've actually chopped it off, so it's a not it's not a full circle. Now, you know, I mean, it is what it is, I suppose, but it's not bad. But it, it catches my eye, and I see that. And um, will I use this company again? I don't know. I mean, I just thought it would be just a little bit of common sense that they would sort of use the. You know sort of work out that it'd be round as opposed to almost round and then chop a little bit off the end but there it is anyway folks all right so the stickers are out um i'm not pricing up anything at the moment okay um because i want to set up a paypal properly with it and all the rest of it i'm literally waiting for the badges to come in i've, I've had um i'm gonna get a batch of 50 um des Catties badges Woo look at me and um and then we'll see how it goes and then obviously i'll price it up put it on the channel it'll be on instagram and then you know if you really want to support me then that's great that's brilliant that's how i want to do it as i say i don't want to go down the road of patreon and all that i really don't believe in that that's some people do but i really don't i don't believe in giving me money i'd sooner you know, if you're going to give me a fiver or 200 quid for one of these stickers, then, you know, at least you're getting a sticker for 200 pounds. <laughs> anyway, so so there it is. Um, with my affiliate, uh, the Amazon affiliate program, I had, an, I had an email from Amazon not long ago to say that they were going, I've got 90 days and um, then they're going to terminate it because obviously I've not had a lot of custom on there. All right. Which is which is kind of niggled me a little bit because it's not like, you know, I'm trying to potentially bring custom to Amazon. I get a tiny, tiny morsel of percentage from it. What what you know, what, what what's it doing to Amazon? You know, it, it's just there. I'm just a tiny little, you know, tiny little um, tiny little fish, really a little minnow in a massive sea of sharks. Um, so the affiliates going unless it picks up unless it really picks up I've, I've got about it was 90 days it's obviously probably a little bit less now it's probably about 80 I suppose um, unless the Amazon picks up then it's going I'm not going to be promoting that anymore because it's not worth it it's just not worth it you know um, the podcast yeah I'm trying to keep the podcast going I know I've mixed it up a little bit I mean on that last one I hope people enjoyed it I mean you know, we, we did have a little bit of a drink and um, 
I'm not sure if that's everybody's thing, you know, but it, it was just us having a laugh. You know, I'm not I'm not trying to, you know, I'm not trying to sort of take over anybody or anything like that. I literally am. It's just me a few friends or on my own just having a chat about, you know, bushcraft and outdoor stuff and things like that. It was just unfortunate. It wasn't unfortunate because I still think it was a laugh. I mean, I drank a bottle of slow gin that night and it did sort of like by the end of the video, I was probably just a little bit, you know, I think people have pointed out that we, there was a little bit of alcohol induced in it, but we kept it clean. It was a laugh and that's basically what it's all about. I think sometimes it gets a little bit too serious. So, so to be able to just sort of, um, you know, keep people happy uh, and laughing, it's, it's got to be a winner, isn't it? All right. So there it is, folks. There, that's that's how we are. All right. So potentially we've got the stickers there. I'm just waiting on the um, I'm just waiting on the badges to come. Um, I'll set up the decent PayPal's and then people that I'll put a price up on all the rest of it and then people you know offering me that support. That's fantastic. All right. So um, thanks for watching, folks. I, I really appreciate your support. I'm going to keep saying it now. I really do. I really do appreciate your support. If you're new to the channel and you haven't subscribed already and you've come this far to the video to the end of the video, please hit the subscribe button. Please hit, hit the like button. Even hit that bell so then you'll be the first to know um, when my new videos are coming out. And um, and that's it, all right? So it's Des Catty signing out. Please don't sort of like start wrecking me about the saws and everything else because it is just my humble opinion. I don't really care what saw you use. You know, you could use the saw from your leather man or whatever. I'm just sort of showing you a few little saws and I sort of like, you know, sort of like my own humble opinion of the uh, Silky and the Laplander kind of uh, debate. All right, so thanks for watching. All right, take care, folks. Des Catty signing out, and I'll see you on the flip side. Take care.